I want you to put your hands together for this vessel of God, this daughter of this ministry who loved God and heard the voice of God and surrendered to the will of God and is here to bless this house. Put your hands together for Prophetess Juanita Biden. Well, why don't we just lift our hands up toward the Lord tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many just love the Lord tonight? I just love the Lord tonight. Glory to your name, Jesus. His presence is so awesome in this place tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's so easy to love you. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. Because you're wonderful. It's so easy to love you. So easy to love you. It's so easy to love you. Because you're wonderful. Come on, help me. So easy to love you. Oh, come on. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. Because you're wonderful. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. Because you're wonderful. Come on, everybody, say it again. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. Because you're wonderful. So easy to love you. Thank you, Jesus. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. Because you're wonderful. Come on, take it up. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. Because you're wonderful. So easy to love you. Yes, it is. So easy to love you. Yes, it is. So easy to love you. Because you're wonderful. So easy to love you. Oh, God. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. Because you're wonderful. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. 
Because you're wonderful So easy, Jesus I love you with all of my heart, Jesus I love you with all of my mind, soul, and spirit You're the lover of my soul I love you with all of my heart, Jesus I love you with all of my soul, Jesus I love you with all of my mind, Jesus Because you're wonderful I love you more today than I did yesterday I love you today more than I did yesterday I love you today more than I did yesterday Because you're wonderful Every hour of the day Every minute of the hour Every second of the minute I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, Jesus you more than anything tonight I really mean it I love you more than anything more than anything this world can bring I love you because you're my savior I love you because you're my keeper I love you because you're my way in and my way out. God, you're so wonderful. With every fiber of my being. Every fiber of my being. All of the strength I have tonight. I just want to tell you how much I love you, Jesus. It's so easy to love you So easy to love you So easy to love you Because you're wonderful So easy to love you So easy to love you so easy to love you because you're wonderful. Somebody just start telling them how much you love him. Just tell them how much you love him. Teach us how to love you, Jesus. Teach us how to love you, Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I love you, Jesus. God, I love you, Jesus. I give honor to God tonight and to my pastor and to Lady Boyd and to a man a man and to Lady Boyd in her absence and to Mother Boyd and to Dr. Johnson to all of the saints that are represented in this place today we give God glory and we give him praise I'm going to ask tonight that everybody that's sitting at the back to come to the front, please, because we're filling in the gaps. We're filling in the gaps. We're filling in the gaps. 
is us, our, and we. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. I'm on eight. It's us, our, and we. Tonight, I have something to share with my home church that the world have not yet seen. Pastor have not even seen it. He was supposed to come yesterday, but the weather got bad and he couldn't. But something <clears throat> is miraculously going on in the atmosphere. And we are in a divine visitation of the Lord and I know it. And I know it. <clears throat> One of the books said that the presence of the Lord, that Jehovah was in this place and I did not even know it. Jehovah is in this place because a building is not sanctified. A building is not holy. It is the sanctified people that sanctify the building. And when the people become unsanctified, the holiness of the building begin to lift. And so we are called to sustain God in this atmosphere. Because this is the place that the Lord has chosen. We give honor to Dr. Morgan sitting there. I didn't see you, sir, sitting there. <clears throat> In tonight's lesson, I have not left this building since I walked in here on Thursday. And just looking at what God is speaking and knowing that sleep, sleep, the power of being asleep is sleeping at the wrong time is sleeping while on duty, is sleeping during the harvest instead of praying, is sleeping during a sermon which cost a boy his life, sleeping during transfiguration, because the Bible said that the disciples were asleep and as they were awakened by the glory of God, they saw the transfiguration. But would it have been not something had the glory not woke them up? They would have missed seeing Jesus transformed. It's a dangerous thing to be asleep. But when I look at the rest of the text of where God is taking us in this message, I came across something that he was speaking in the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter, and we are leaning toward coming from still the Song of Solomon, the fifth chapter in the second verse, when it talks about the companion. And we got to the point of my sister, my love. And that's where we stopped. And my love was translated in Hebrew to my companion. So as I began to look at that and the Lord began to speak to us on Sunday and he began to say to us, who shall sustain me? Who shall sustain me? I'm looking for somebody to sustain me. And I won't go back into that, but he leaned over and began to talk about the power of us, we, and our. And my mind went back over something that he said. That Jesus just needed somebody's lunch. He didn't need their name. He just needed the little boy's lunch. So that he could feed the masses. So that Jesus, please sit her down. Please pick her up off the floor and sit her down because that's not the Holy Ghost. Let the saints say amen. amen. Spirit is subject. And the word of the Lord coming along, there's going to be distractions, especially for this word that God gave me tonight. I expected that. 
He said, ushers come now and pick her up off the floor and sit her down. What God is doing in this house, it is the working of the Lord and not of us. And not of us. And I don't know about you all, but I'm not going to let anybody hinder what God is about to do in our lives. Now, I got a, I got a weak amen right there, but, but I'm here to tell you that we are in a moment with God. And you can let people in this church act stupid all you want to, but I'm not. Because I didn't come back home to die. I didn't come back here to die. The Lord sent me back here because he said that there's about to be a reviving. There's about to be a restoring. There's about to be a renewing. And tell somebody, if that's not where you're going, get out of my way. Get out of my way. Get out of my way because we can't play this time. We can't play church. We can't play praise. We can't play tongues. We can't play shouting. We can't play dancing. We can't play with none of it. Tell somebody, it's no time to play. Oh, y'all didn't say that strong enough. I said, look your neighbor in the face and tell them, it's no time to, to, to play. Because my prayer, my prayer while I've been in this building is God flush it all out. God flay those shot. God flush it all out. Anybody that don't want to be here, flush them out. Anybody that's got a bad spirit, flush them out. Anybody that ain't going to be broken, flush them out. Who am I talking to tonight? Oh my God, somebody lift your hands up and give God a praise in here. My God from Zion. In Genesis the 11th chapter, in Genesis the 11th chapter, if we can start there. It said, and the, I got something to show you. And the whole earth was of one language and of one accent and mode of expression. And as they journeyed eastward, they found a plain valley in the land of Shinar. And they settled and dwelt there. And they said one to another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. So they had brick for stone and slime and bitumen for mortar. And they said, come, let us build us a city and a tower whose top reaches into the sky. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered over the whole earth. When God gave me this, I was looking at when he said, and they said, a man to his fellow. That is indicative of the fact that something was already in motion. There was something already in motion. Because we talked about the unity of the spirit and we talked about us, we, and our. But as I began to pray, in this building and walking through this building, he began to talk about the other realms of us, we, and our. Because we can say to ourselves that I'm a part of us, and I'm a part of we, and I'm a part of our. And we can say amen. But this passage of scripture was saying that they were trying to build something for God without the spirit of God. They were trying to get to a place in God instead of praying there and being led there. They decided, let us get together and let us build this. What the Lord began to say to me and I wrote it down, that there's a, there's a real danger in when you are familiar with where God wants to take you. There's a danger in that. There's a danger in knowing a little bit of what he want to do in your life. Because when you have an inkling of where God is trying to take you, then there's a possibility that you can start taking yourself beyond God. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Anybody here? Anybody here? Because you can know where God wants you to go. And the Lord will let you have experiences like he did me. And he will let me have experiences and take me all over the world. But the danger in that. That, and I'm going to talk about me. I'm not talking about you. The danger in that is once you become familiar with where God is trying to take you, you're no longer being led by God. You're being led by what you think you know. Amen, somebody. 
You're being led by your own instinct. In other words, I know how to go to a church. I know how to get up in a pulpit. I know how to preach. I know how to, you know, walk in the church and, and, and go up in the pastor's office and, and, and let the, wait till the people come and get me. I know how to walk down Antoinette and, and, and let them give me the seat in the pulpit. I know how to do all of that. I know how to, you know, handle myself when I get up to preach. I know how to minister. Come on, somebody. I've been doing this since I was 16. So I know how to do it. But what the Lord had to do in my life, he had to take me to a breaking point because I had got beyond him. I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. I'm not talking about you so you can at least say amen because I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me unless you can find you in me. So, 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 so he said, so you think you know where you're going. You got it. And you got all the praise of the earth. You got it. You're preaching in the biggest of churches. You're everywhere. But now you're leading you. Because now you don't even have to go to Father in prayer. You can just get up and start preaching. And you got to be careful because people will respond to you based upon what you used to have. Not what you got now. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me because people have a remembrance of your anointing. I'm not hearing y'all. People can remember when you did minister and bless them. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. And they will be shouting and applauding when there is no anointing. Oh, it's quiet in here tonight. It's quiet in here tonight. It's Friday night. It's Friday night. It's Friday night. It's Friday night. You ain't do you you well, watch this, watch this. So you're being led. You're being led by your by your own instinct. You're being led by yourself. You're being led by you're being led by what you think the Lord has called you to do. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. And so when you do that and you begin to lead yourself, how do you know when you begin to lead yourself? You begin to lead, listen, you begin to lead yourself. When you have to consult with nobody but yourself, you begin to lead yourself. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody. When you cannot hear truth coming from nobody but yourself, you begin to lead yourself. When you take the real truth and you distort it to make it be in favor of you, of what you desire to do. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me because you can do that. You can take a truth. Let me help you with this. You can take a truth. And I can be talking right now. And I can be saying everything I just got through saying. And you got people in this building that are standing up and saying, you preach it. But you saying that. You saying that because you don't want that truth for you. You want that truth to be for somebody that you think need it. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. You don't want the truth for you. But you know that you're being led by God when you can hear truth and say, God, you talking to me. God, it's me. Uh, it's not my neighbor. It's not my mother. It's not my father. But it's me. It's me, Lord. It's me. It's me. God. God, you're teaching here. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's me, Lord. Oh, Jesus. It's me. I'm going to say something. You're going to uh huh. He said, he said, and they took and they and they took the brick and the mortar. And it says here that that in the Hebrew, that brick signifies falsities which they fashion for themselves. Uh-huh. Brick, brick means falsities which you fashion for yourself. When you're gonna build something with brick, it's a falsity that you're trying to build for yourself. Oh God, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. It's a falsity. It's falsifying the original anointing because the Bible said that what God wanted them to build this out of was stone, not hewn out brick. Hewn out brick is brick that has to be hammered with iron to be shaped. And God has said in this next hour, he's not going to beat you to serve him. He's not going to pound you to tell him yes. I'm not hearing nobody. He's not going to make you do it because it was this. If he do that, he cannot build what he is trying to build for the kingdom because you didn't come because he called you. You come because he had to beat you there. He had to pound you. I, I, I'm not hearing about you. He had to take a, he had to take a steel act. That's why the Bible said that, 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 that Jesus, Jesus was the stone that the builders rejected. 
and now he's become the head cornerstone because stone represents truth. I'm not hearing y'all. And when you don't want the truth, watch this, then you would take, you would take iron and reshape yourself to look like the truth. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. You would make yourself start acting like I'm the truth. You would start praising God like you the truth. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. But the glory that hit me this week when God gave this to me, he said, people that do that, then they are being turned over to my hand. Because when they begin to build this, could nobody stop them but God. I'm not hearing. Tell somebody, don't let God stop you. Don't let God stop you. When God said come, you better come. When God said tell him yes, you better tell him yes. When God said yield, you better yield. When God said be broken, you better be broken. Because I want to be, I want to be a stone. I want God to, watch this. I want to be, I want to be a stone. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm not even almost finished with this. He said, he said, he said it signifies, it signifies the bricks being signifies as falsification for themselves. And when he said, and let us burn them to a burning, it signifies evil for the love of self. Oh, Jesus. Signifies evil for the love of self. Oh, Jesus. Can't get no amens right there either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God told me it was going to be like that. And he said, and they had brick for stone, <laughs> signifies <laughs> they, had, they had falsehood instead of truth. Uh -huh. And they used bitumen. Bitumen is what they call a vicious black mixture. It's like the tar out on the street. And that's why you don't bend. That's why you can't break. Come on, somebody. That's why you're not soft. That's why you're not gentle. That's why you're not kind. That's why you're not meek. I'm not here to make you shout. I'm here to help us grow this ministry. I'm not here nobody talk back to me. I'm here to preach the truth so all the line wonders can leave if you want to. I'm not here nobody talk back. When, you, when you're broken, you're sweet, you're gentle, you're kind, you're meek. Come on, somebody. You're constantly asking the Lord, tell me the truth, God. Hey, Hey, even this week as I walked around the church I've been all over the world and back but I'm still asking the Lord show me the truth God speak truth in my spirit let my spirit become a spirit that's acquainted with truth help me to be a lover of it a lover of the truth A lover of the truth. Watch this. A lover of the truth. That's what the Bible said in the book of Proverbs 1 and 7. That the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But what are you talking about fear? He's not talking about being scared of God. In that text, it doesn't mean being scared of God. It means being in awe of God. It means I had a look at God. And when I saw him, I knew I was no match for him. Oh, Jesus. Too many of us speaking in tongues, but we never had a real encounter with God. Because when you have an encounter with God, it makes you walk bent over. Oh, Jesus. It makes you low. I can't get nobody to talk back to me right there. It makes you humble. I can't get nobody. I'm in awe of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whatever he's doing, it's the Lord that's doing it. It's not me. Come on here, somebody. When you walk in the church, you just low. You're just reaching out saying, God, I'm just a vessel. What would you have me to do? Who would you have me to touch? Who am I talking to? When you really have seen the Lord, oh, my God, and the Holy Ghost begin to tell me. He said, there's going to be revealings of my spirit in this building because people need to really see God. God. Not, not people. Oh, Lord, I'm saying something. Not people. I just said something. Not people. Not people. You're letting people mess you up. Not people. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You got to be careful. You got to be careful that you're not one of the ones that are saying, let us. Let us. You got to be careful because I'm going to tell you something. When God starts using you and the Lord starts prophesying through you and the Lord starts singing through you and all of that, you're going to get you a group. Every person in this church got members. Don't you ever forget that. You got people that you don't even know that love you. I'm not hearing y'all. You may consider yourself as nobody. I'm just a praise singer. But there's some people that love Kim. There's some people that love you. There's some people that love you. And guess what happens? When they think you are offended, your group start helping you and supporting against the other group. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. 
clapping. Everybody got members in here. Okay, I'm not hearing no. I said everybody got members in here. Wow. Jesus, help me, God. Wow. Everybody got members in here. Jesus. I'm gonna say it again. Sister Cummins, you got some members. I'm gonna say, Sister Erica, you got some members. And well, I ain't calling, I ain't gonna know. You got members. You got people that love Sister Erica. Because the minute they think you offended by someone, who did it? Well, girl, don't you, don't you pay no attention to them. Because God won't use you. You just, and so all of a sudden now, instead of getting it right, we start building our membership. We start building our membership within the membership. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. We start building our membership within the membership. Hey, tell you, I want you to touch your neighbor and say, shut your church down. Shut your church down. Shut your church down. Shut your church down. God, I wish I had somebody to praise him right there. Shut your church down. Shut your church down and join the kingdom. Shut your church down and join the kingdom. Shut your church down. Because if you don't shut it down, it's being built with brick and mortar. And God is going to send confusion. That's what he's going to do. He's going he gonna, to he gonna send confusion and confuse the whole. I ain't hear nobody talk. Somebody, somebody was telling me, somebody was telling me the other day, they said, Prophetess, you should come back and bring back the mentorship class, and you should come back and you should, you should bring back the spiritual enrichment class. And the first thought came to my mind, well, I got to talk to Dr. Morgan and see if I can re-hook it back up with the school. I'm going to know if you're talking about, hey, yeah, I'm going to bring the membership back, because guess what? You got to shut your membership down. I'm not getting nobody to talk back to me. You got to join your yourself with the kingdom of God who am I talking to if you don't then all we doing is building the tower of Babel all over again so you got to know how to shut a church down you got to know how to shut a church down, Emory. People got to know how to shut a church down. This is how you shut a church down. When you get offended and somebody said, what's wrong? You should say, just pray for me. Well, what's the matter? I saw the way she looked at you. Don't worry about that. Just pray. Just pray. Come on, somebody. Because you don't want your side. You want you. I'm not hearing nobody talk. You don't want God to deal with a person. You want God to reveal truth. I'm not hearing nobody. But if you go fight, how is God going to fight? No, in this battle, you got to lay down. I'm not here because it ain't no fight if one of y'all laying down. If Muhammad Ali in the ring and he's swinging, they tell me through the boxing, the research, and I was watching a boxing commentary one night, and they said it takes more strength out of a person to swing and hit nothing than it does to swing and hit something. Head on Shonda, tell somebody, you got to lay down. When you think you're in a battle, you got to take a dive. Come on, somebody. I don't care if they think that you're fixing the fight. You got to tell them that the battle has already been fought and the victory has already been won. Not my victory. Not my victory. Not your victory. Uh, but the victory of the Lord. The victory for the kingdom. Good Lord have mercy, Jesus. Ooh. I can't get nobody to sing on Jesus. Help me, Lord. So how do we... How do, we, how do we get there? No, we're going somewhere with this. How do we get there? How do we get there? How do we get there? He said, there's two types of fears. One fear is, there is one fear, and this fear is from the ignorance of the truth. This is where you was raised wrong. This is where you got involved with somebody, in it, and they, were just, they just took you off course. Been there too. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh-huh. This is, no. Y'all gonna lie, I don't lie. I don't lie no more. Let me just say that to you. I don't lie no more. I, I don't lie no more about nothing. About nothing. The truth is a naked truth. My truth ain't got no clothes on. Amen, somebody. You trying to dress yours up. Mine is a naked truth. Oh, come on here, somebody. Hold up, I'll share you. Somebody better say, God, do it for me. He wants the naked truth. You got to take all them turtlenecks off. You got to take all them dressed up clothes off and come on. Because if it's the real truth, you ain't got to dress it up. It's the naked truth all by itself. And when everything else finished, nothing will stand but the truth of God. Hold on, I'll show you. Nothing will stand but the truth. But he said, he said, he said, that's one truth out of ignorance. But he said, the dangerous truth is the truth of cupidity. The truth of cupidity.
Like people say, well, this is Valentine's Day. And that, you know, Cupid shoots his arrow. And, I, and when I saw this word cupidity, I almost, Dr. Morgan, thought that it meant something with the, with the Cupid. So I just wanted to look up the Cupid and start reading how, how the Cupid was designed. The Cupid was designed to shoot an arrow. But the history of it says that though it looked like a baby when it shoots its arrow, it wounds its victims. Oh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm not hearing nobody. In other words, it got to hurt you to make you love somebody. Come on, somebody. I said, okay, God, there's a relationship here to cupidity. Because cupidity in this passage means that the danger of this falsity, it says, when it is birthed out of the love for self. It says cupidity is greed. Cupidity is covetousness. Cupidity is possessiveness. Cupidity is, 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 is acquisitiveness, meaning excess interest in acquiring stuff and things. I can't help myself. I will kill anybody to get a thing or get in a place or have something that somebody else got. Cupidity is I want what I see you got. Cupidity is uh, I'm I'm going to work with this one for a minute right here. Uh, Cupidity is I want what somebody else got. Cupidity is covetousness. Jesus. Cupidity is greed. Wait a minute. Cupidity is greed. No matter how much, how much you do, you still want more. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. Cupidity makes us to the point that it brings about the wrong kind of fear. And this is a fear, Dr. Morgan, that the, that, was, that the book says that this fear hates to lose honor and position. So this fear will make you hurt people. This fear right here, this fear right here, this got been a minute since telling you. This fear right here, this fear, oh Jesus, Lord God, help me tonight, Lord. This fear right here will hurt anybody. This fear right here will say, You better not look like, you better not look like you're gonna ignore me. I'm not hearing y'all. This fear says, You better not look like you're not gonna pay me no attention. I'm not getting nobody to talk back to me. Somebody need to say something here. Are we in a real church or where we at? Where we at? Where we at? This fear don't need to say I'm sorry. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. This fear don't need to say forgive me. This fear just hug you and it'll just speak to you the next Sunday. But it ain't got to ask for forgiveness because this fear is not broken. This fear has no humility in it. This fear, watch this, this fear, do not fear the Lord because it does not have a reverence for the love of God. And watch this, and it says, it says, Pastor, it says, this fear right here, this fear right here, it will not protect the love of God. It will not protect the love of God. So, so, so in other words, in, in, in other words, this fear, this fear have nothing in it to protect the projection and the perception of the kingdom. This fear would rather for the kingdom at large to be misjudged rather than for it to get down. Somebody, somebody need to say. If you can't say amen, just say out. Just say, well, some Lord, anything. No, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting somewhere with this. This, this, who? I just said something right here. I just said something right here. Pastor, I just said something right here. This, this fear. Well, who would I? It doesn't protect the love of God. Watch this. It doesn't protect. When it says the house of God, if you look it up in the Hebrew, the house of God means the good of God. But did y'all remember how Pastor Boyd used to call this the temple? Because the temple of God means the truth of God. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. And a lot of y'all want to turn Bethel into the house of God because when you leave, you just want to feel good. You don't want no truth. I don't want to feel good. 
I don't want to feel good. Now I know why he didn't say, for all of us are the house of God. He said, you are the temple. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Good Lord have mercy. I said, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all looking at me like, for real? No, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. There's a reason why he said, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Because he said, I expect you to carry truth. You are the carriers of the real truth. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to keep saying it. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. What is a Holy, what is a Holy Ghost? What is the Holy Ghost? It is a spirit of truth. Hold up, Shanda. So how can you walk alive when you when you're the temple of the Holy Ghost? You better clean that temple out. Come on here, somebody. How can you walk with God? You better ask God, purge me with his that I might be clean. Wash me, Lord. That I might be whiter than snow. Hold up, Baba Baba. See ya. Oh, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Because you see, when you are familiar with how God is going to use you, watch this, and your temple is no longer available for the Holy Ghost, and your temple is no longer available for the truth, then the falsity of who you have become, become magnified in your mind. And when it become magnified in your mind, what you will start saying, uh, I ain't hear nobody talk to me, because I remember... When everything crashed for me, when everything crashed and hit the ground, and I, no, I'm the right one for the job. God told me, you the woman for the job. I'm the woman for the job. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. When everything crashed on the ground, uh, Dr. Morgan, I wasn't, at first, I wasn't interested in no, Lord, purify me, and Lord, I was like, but when they gonna call me back to preach? Well, when am I gonna go back on TV? Well, when is gonna happen for me again? Well, when am I gonna have a big moment again? Well, is I gonna ever get my ministry back? Is it, and God said, that's what I'm after right there. That's what I'm after right there. That's what, because, listen, when you went to the ground, the first thing you thought about is the position that you lost, not the relationship that you lost with me. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Too many of us in here it's all oh, y'all. It's position problem. I just want to know is my position going to still be there? That is my that is my place with God. I said God I said so what are you doing? He said I'm purifying you. I'm purifying you for the next level. He said, this ain't no problem. This is a plan. So then I had to walk that out. I was like, what you mean, God? This is a plan. He said, this is a test. This is a test of your heart. I'm going to try you. I just said, no, no, no. You, they, they, they said you're the prophet to the nations. You said you're the prophet to the nations. So now, in order for me to try you, I got to try you with the nations. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I got to let everybody turn on you because I want you to see what's in you. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I want you to see how engrossed you was with people and connections and this and that and being with that person and that you didn't know who you were. You were who you were while connected with them. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Where did everybody go? Where did everybody go? No, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was prophetess binding because I was preaching on Bishop Jakes' stage. I was prophetess binding because I was preaching camp meeting every year for Rob Parsley. Y'all didn't say nothing. Can't get nobody to talk to me about that. I was, I was, I was prophetess binding because. I was in the dome. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Somebody ain't talking to me today. I just want to know, do we have a real ministry in here? I was, he said, no. He said, you only know, you only know, like Job, what's been told to you. But where I'm getting ready to take you, when you come out of this, ain't nobody got to tell you who you are. Ain't nobody got to tell you what I called you to do. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me for all of y'all that don't want to suffer. For all of y'all that, that don't want to go through nothing. For all of y'all that feel like everybody is against you. For all of y'all that saying, when is my turn? How about you may not never get a turn, but how about you supposed to be happy with the fact that God got his eyes on you. With the fact that God is choosing to purify your life and purge you. How about that being powerful? How about that being huge? But that ain't huge for people. That ain't huge. 
Loving God ain't huge enough. Serving God ain't huge enough. Coming to prayer ain't huge enough. Oh, I learned my lesson. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, laying on your face before God ain't big enough. You know why? Because don't nobody see you. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. You don't get no credit for praying because it's your reasonable service. Who am I talking to? You don't get no credit for walking low. You don't, be, uh, you don't get no credit for, for just disappearing. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Lord Jesus, help me. Help me in this place tonight. God, I feel your presence, Jesus. I feel your presence, Jesus. And I said, okay, God. All right. So then, so then how are you going to do this? So then, after he, after he put his foot on my neck, I mean, he, he wouldn't let it up. Uh-huh. After I looked up and lost everything, he wouldn't let it up. Because I ain't never gave you all my testimony. I just kind of breezed through it. He said, because no, you're not going to testify. You're going to teach your fire. You're going to teach your fire. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Because everybody can testify and make you shout. I'm not going to testify. I'm going to teach you fire. I'm going to teach you fire. I'm going to teach you this one. I'm going to teach you this one. And after he had his foot on my neck and he wouldn't let it up, I said, God, I said, now what, what's going on? I said, well, he said, first place you got to start with forgiveness. And I said, well, I, so I went through what like y'all. Oh, Lord, I forgive. One day I had a real good prayer moment. I said, God, I forgive. And Lord, I forgive. And Jesus, I really forgive. I he said, but let me help you with something. And then time went on. And then something else would come up. And somebody would mention somebody's name and I would say you know what don't say that name and God began to say to me every time you got to repeat the story you ain't forgave every time you got to say you know what the Lord done blessed me and sister comments but you don't know what we used to go through you don't know how she used to baby I went through something with her no you ain't forgave you ain't forgave you ain't forgave I'm not getting nobody talk back to me you ain't forgave you know why because your remembrance have not been purged that thing have not been purged from the back of your mind that's why you can't let it go watch this somebody said but why and how i said okay god how do i well then how do i do this how do i do this so i said i forgive i forgive and he was like no you haven't i said lord yes i have so i went on the fast came off the fast oh i forgave i forgave oh lord i really don't forgive he said no you haven't no you haven't you're still holding it and i said lord I, I forgive he said let me help you with something he said time waits for no man and he said, the past is the past. Watch this. And everything from the past that you do not forgive, you bring it side by side with you. Now watch this. Because the Lord is requiring that you keep moving forward. That means every step you take towards your destiny, you bring in that thing with you. I'm not hearing nobody talk about it. So guess what? You're moving in time, but you're not redeeming time. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing about that. I'm going to say that one more time. You're moving in time, but you're not redeeming time because you're bringing what you're supposed to be walking out of with you. I gotta let you I gotta let you marinate in that for a minute. So then you wonder why whatever it is you're trying to do, whether it's your business, whether it's a promotion, whether it's a ministry, you wonder why it won't grow. It won't grow because every time you decide to bring this with you in the next step you're telling God is still about me and I will always be alone I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me you can't produce nothing with one person I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me you can't go nowhere holding junk in your heart I'm not hearing y'all see I knew God had got to the bottom of it when he would wake me up in the middle of the night and I would be praying for my ex-husband praying for his wife I said God I don't want their marriage to fall apart let this be the time that it glorifies you I'm not hearing y'all talk God let this be the time that you use her that you use him for your glory I'm not hearing y'all I pray for them I don't hate them 
Ain't nobody gonna come and bring me nothing. Baby. Well, you know that. Get away from me with that. Get away from me with that. I don't need a praise group. I don't need a group around me. I'm not gonna let you run and tell me what you think you know. Because what you don't know is when you bring it to me, I'm gonna ask God to fix it. I said, God, release them and prosper them. Bless their ministry. Let a double portion come upon them. I'm not hearing y'all. Because God, I realize now that it was a plan. It wasn't a problem. I remember all that I will share you. I realize now, God, that you use the whole thing to slam me to the ground so you can beautify me. Oh, she come out. I just wish somebody in here would start praising God because what you think is against you, God is using that thing to purify. Oh, my God, my God. I wish I had somebody in here to give God a praise in here. Somebody give him a praise in here. I said he's trying to purify you. I said he's trying to make you whole. I said he's trying to deliver you. I said it's not something that's coming against you. It's something that God is doing in you. In you. Uh-huh. Sit down, sit down. I feel the presence of the Lord. Yo, 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 sit down. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Hold by my shot. Turn it up. My God, I feel something breaking it here. My God, I feel something. Holy Ghost said, let it go. Let it go. That thing didn't come against you. That thing was for you. Who am I talking to? That thing came because there was something evil in you. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Because if it's an effect to you to the point that you can't think of, if it's affected you to the point that you can't speak to somebody, then what God is trying to tell you is that I use that to reveal your evil. I use it to reveal who you are in the inside. I use it. See, you said, now let's get the record straight. You said, use me, Lord. 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 But your use me, Lord, was, he gonna use me to preach. He gonna use me to prophesy. He gonna use me to lay hands on the sick. He gonna use me, Lord. You saying use me, Lord. He gonna use me. Cause I'm gonna sing. He gonna use me on the praise team. He gonna use me. He gonna use me in the band. He gonna use me to teach. He gonna use me to prophesy. But God said, when can I use somebody to go to the bottom? Uh huh. When can I use somebody to take a hit? When can I? I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I'm not hearing y'all say nothing. When can I use somebody to walk the walk of purification? When can I use somebody to walk the green mile? I'm not hearing nobody. When can I use somebody to walk the mile? When you say ain't did nothing wrong but God, I even pray for them. Because God, they don't even know what they're doing. But I love them anyhow. I'm not hearing y'all. When can I use somebody to understand that God knows the way that I take? But when he has tried me, I'm coming out as pure gold. When can I find somebody that know that he knows the way that I take? When can I find? Y'all looking at me. 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 And see, you looking at me. You looking at me. But ain't one person in here been through. Not 5% of what I walked through. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You say, but why God did this happen to me? Because the Lord has to reveal the intent of every man's heart. Ain't no sense of you being mad. Because every man had to do what was in his heart to do. You can't, you can't control a person's heart. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. So, 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 so we're not out to protect it. We're not out to protect the love of God. Because we still, we still selfish. Pastor God spoke to me earlier today. And he said, perception, the killer of the image of the kingdom. And I said, God, what you say? He said, perception is a killer to the image of the kingdom. I said, God, break that down. He said, the world thrives on perception. God, let me teach in here tonight. Let me teach in here tonight before I show this, this, this thing. He said, the world thrives on perception. He said, so, so perception 
becomes a killer for a ministry. God help me, Jesus. Perception is a killer. When you are mean usher, perception says the church is mean. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. When you are arrogant elder, perception says everybody in here think they something. I'm not hearing y'all. Ain't nobody gonna let me teach, but I'm gonna teach anyhow. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Y'all gonna come on, come on, come on here. You ain't gotta say amen. I don't need your amen on this one. Perception, perception is when you make yourself look like you might be the pastor's girlfriend, but you're not. I'm not hearing nobody. I'm gonna walk in the Holy Ghost tonight. Perception, perception is when you make people think something is going on and it's not. Because you don't know the wisdom as to how to carry yourself. Perception can kill a ministry. Perception. I can't get nobody to say man. I can't get nobody to say man. Where, where's all the saints? Where's all the saints at? Where's all the saints? Perception. Perception. I'm not, Lord Jesus, help me, God. Perception. Perception. It's when you're in a place with somebody too long. Perception. It's when you're the deep parts of the hallway. And don't nobody know that you're in there with somebody. Talking about y'all talking about something. Perception. I'm not here. God said to me, there's too many wrong perceptions around here. Perception. I'm not giving y'all crazy people walking up and down the hallway. Perception. I'm not giving y'all. Y'all better open up your mouth in here and tell God thank you right now. You better tell God thank you right now. Perception. Perception. What, what, what are they perceiving from me in the body of Christ? What do they, what do they perceive? I can't get nobody talk back to me. I just, well, I'm just gonna shut up, Lord. I just, I just gonna, I just gonna, gonna and be quiet. Perception. That's a demon right there. Perception is a real demon. I'm not hearing about perception. The Bible says shun the very appearance of evil. I ain't gonna get nobody to say amen because I don't know if you want the truth or not. He says shun the very appearance of evil. I'm not, y'all, come on, saints. Come on here, saints. He says shun the very appearance of evil. Oh, God, I love you, Jesus, tonight. That means if it look like evil, if you come on, somebody, if you wear it, and somebody have a wrong perception of you. I read an article in a Jewish article that said clothing, clothing is the perception of the kingdom. And what you put on, it determined that when people see you, they ought to look at you and say, there go the kingdom of God. There go the kingdom of God. Perception. Perception. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm just, Lord God, help me God. Help me God. Help me God, help me God, help me God. Perception, and so now he got me looking for perception. Y'all ain't saying that. So when I walk around here, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for perception. It's like, no, I have a responsibility to say, excuse me, that don't look right. Perception, I'm not hearing y'all. Cause God gave me to do something in this building. I'm not hearing y'all. God gave me to do something. I'm not hearing y'all. He gave me to do something in this church. He gave me to do something in this ministry. No, you ain't got to clap. You ain't got to clap. Because I asked to see, see, understand something. Understand something. When the truth is already in you and you are connected with the truth, you want the truth. I'm going to say it one more time. God is getting me. I'm not a visiting evangelist. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to be sitting right over there. And my eyes is going to be open. Because God said, it's time for the intercessors to be watchmen on the wall. It's time for the intercessors to see what the Lord would say are you hearing me we're supposed to be watching for your soul not worried about your feelings I'm not hearing y'all that's what's wrong with the church now you hurt my feelings you hurt my feelings you hurt my feelings all of that is pride and arrogance and self and the lover of self if it means it's going to save my soul hurt my feelings means it's going to take me to another place in God then hurt my feelings I'm not hearing nobody talk to me Lord Jesus I don't I don't we can't we can't build this thing with, with, with brick and mortar 
No, this ain't the season the Lord said that we would use hammers. This ain't the season. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? And what's wrong with you? And do this, and you that, and you that, and you that. Because the Samaritans are coming. Because the people, you know, I'm like, Lord Jesus, something just hit my belly when I said that. The Samaritans are coming. And you know what I'm going to tell you? Like I told the church when God told me to shut the church down. We ain't got time to be babysitting repeat offenders. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. We're not going to babysit anymore repeat offenders. Because God has called this ministry to be a soul winning ministry. I'm not hearing y'all. We're looking out for the lost. And if souls is not your goal, you don't need to work in no capacity of this ministry. You don't need to work on the campus. You don't need to play the music. You don't need to work on the tape. I'm not hearing y'all. Because if soul is not your business you don't care how the tape sound if souls is not your business you don't care that the sound is right if souls is not your business you don't care what the song sound like somebody said if souls is not your business you just playing because you're playing You don't, you don't, you don't usher with an intensity of Lord Jesus. Let me get here early and let me pray God because somebody may walk through the door and let me pick up that they're trying to kill themselves and why everybody else is rushing down here on the front. Come on, souls is. We don't mind if we have to come over to Sister Melissa and say, can we have your seat? Because this lady is really going through. Not, I got here early to get this seat. And what you mean move out of this seat? What you mean? I sit here every Sunday. What you talking about? No, 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 no. When it's about souls, uh, we need your seat. Uh, when it's about souls, uh, you may have to get up. When it's about souls, uh, the saints may have to go to the back. And all the street people may have to come to the front row with their mini skirts on, with their fishnets on. Looking like girls, looking like boys. Boys looking like girls. Who am I talking? My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Jesus. 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 I just heard the Holy Ghost say, there's about to be a divine switch. You better open up your head. It's time now for some of y'all to go to the back and push some power to the front. Who am I preaching to? Somebody better open up your mouth in here. Somebody open up your mouth in here. Wait, wait, wait. Give me a synthesizer. I don't want no. Nah, because something is breaking in this house. Something is breaking in this house. It ain't about you no more. We done paid your rent too many times. And if we still need to pay it, then that means there's something you ain't doing right. We done paid your light bill. We done house people. I'm not even y'all talking about. This is not a hotel. This is the temple of the Lord. Okay. I'm not. Wait a minute. Sit down. I'm, 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 I'm almost finished. 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 Because we need, we need money now. We need money now. Because the church need a bus to go get the lost. I'm not hearing y'all. We can't pay your light bill no more. We can't pay your gas bill no more. I'm not hearing y'all talk back. We can't pay your rent no more. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not, stop talking about us alone and you don't never pay it back. We need to go to the lost. And we don't need to wait until this tick time. We need to get on the corner. We need to have a street revival. I'm not hearing y'all talk back. Somebody better open up your mouth and say something in here. Come on, somebody say something in here. Yes, Lord. Sit down. Sit down, y'all. Sit down. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm... Now we're gonna get some. We're gonna get some tracks. We're gonna remember them. Do you remember that? We're gonna get some tracks. We're gonna pass out tracks that said, Do you want to be saved? I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. Because she. He's soon to come. Say it. He's soon to come. Uh-uh. I need a 
horn sound. I sent this. I don't need that organ sound. Give me something else on top of here because I'm hearing something else in the spirit. God said he'd get me to break something in here. And what he'd get me to break is he's not just going to break it off. He's going to break you into the reality of what we've been called to do. We ain't been called to sit on. I'm not hearing y'all. We ain't been called to sit on our seat and think we somebody. We've been called to work in the ministry. We've been called to go out the souls. We've been called for God to use us. We've been called to lay hands on the sick, cast out devils. That's what we've been called to do. Now I'm going to show you something. Now, now I'm going to show you something. Perception. 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 Oh, Jesus, I feel this thing. Perception. 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 That ain't John. That's our man of God. Perception. I'm not hearing y'all. Perception. I'm not hearing nobody. Perception. That's why we can't hang out in his office. Perception. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. That's our man of God. That's our man of God. Because that's what we used to. That's how we was raised. We was raised on a man of God that was on his face. We was raised with a man of God that went before God on our behalf. We was raised with a man of God that when you walk in his office, you don't know whether the tip or fall down on the ground. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. This is our man of God. I'm not. Somebody better say something in here. This is our man of God. This is our man of God. This is our man of God. That when he says stop, you stop. When he says sit down, you sit down. When he said don't do that, you don't do that. This is our man of God. This is the man of God that you say, what did you see, pastor? What did you see in me? Because I want to change. I'm not here, but y'all talk back to me. Somebody ain't saying something in here. Dr. Morgan, we ain't saying nothing in here. I'm not hearing y'all because that's our man of God. And our man of God flow down on that man of God. And that man of God flow down on me. I'm not hearing y'all. And whatever God is using me to do, flow down on you. I'm not hearing whatever God using you to do, flow down on the next person. I'm not hearing y'all. Don't stop the flow. Don't stop the flow of perception. Don't stop the flow of perception. Do not stop the flow of God with perception. With perception. With perception. With perception. Lord, I'm, 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 I'm going to show you something in a minute. I'm going to show you something in a minute. I'm going to show you something in a minute. Oh, because, yes, Lord, that's Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Perception. Because I got the other day, I got a pad and a pen. And I told Antoinette and Sister Morgan, I said, come walk all over this church with me. I said, we're going to see what needs to be done. Because cause I'm a servant. Because I'm called to sustain the Lord. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm called to sustain the Lord. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm called. I'm called to sustain the Lord. I saw somebody in here with a vacuum cleaner. Hold on, Abashaya. He was just vacuuming the floor. He was just vacuuming the floor. He was just vacuuming the floor. But the Holy Ghost showed me something. He said, Where's the saints at that will wipe up stuff? Because when you wipe it, you wipe in the anointed. He said, Where's the saints at that will come in and wipe the benches off? I'm not hearing y'all. Because what you're doing is you're smearing the anointing all over the church. That's the way it used to be. I don't care if some of y'all mean mug me. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You don't scare me. You know, because you're one of the ones that God is getting ready to get rid of anyway. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. So not, no, I'm not scared of nobody in here. Not one person. Not one person. Not one person. Because I'm telling you, it's been going on long enough. 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 And God said enough is enough. And after I show you this picture, I'm advising you to get straight or get out. 
because God is not playing. Pastor haven't even seen this. Dim the lights right here. What I'm getting ready to show you right now. Thank you, Jesus. I showed you that picture. I showed you that picture. And when I showed you the picture and told you how, the Lord, when I said about the familiarity of where God is trying to take you. So in this season, the Lord got me going to churches. And he won't let me stay in the hotels. Because I'm not familiar with that. I'm familiar with five-star hotels. I'm familiar with big old beds and living rooms. I'm familiar with fruit baskets and flowers. Y'all ain't saying that. I'm familiar with room service. I'm not familiar when somebody tell me to go and lay down on the floor of a church. But the day that the Lord showed up in the temple that morning, that night, some of y'all was watching it on television. Let me show you what happened. Bring me my pen. Bring me my pen. There was a little boy, 17 years old, watching by internet. And he was watching by internet. And he said, the Lord told him to take a picture of the, the, the whole, take, take a picture of what was going on. And he called our ministry and sent this. And said, Dr. Bynum, there's a sword in your hand. And there's a white cloud over you. And then when he sent the picture, the Lord noticed, he showed me this wing right here. And then he showed me another the wing right there and then he showed me an angel bending down on the pallet where I was sleeping at are you going where God is going and I said Lord but watch this pastor if you follow this if you follow this I'm gonna do it with my right hand right here enlarge the picture there's another angel and his hand came down and he broke something right there we took this picture through forensics there is nothing that's been added to this picture it is the original picture it is not a fake in that service I told the people to shout because God was breaking the yoke and this is an angel's arm we don't even know what that is but it's being broken that is, I'm not hearing nobody say nothing I'm telling you the manifestation of God is showing up go up some go up with the picture right here I thought this was a cloud that was over my hand I thought this was a cloud right here you can even see in the in, in the picture where my face became disfigured in the picture that that wasn't added to the picture we took this picture through forensic we took it through three forensic specialists and they said nothing has been touched on this picture that what is in this picture is originally what God put in the picture who am I talking to in this place I said okay God so when we went through the forensic this part right there that looked like it was some smoke coming down and this part right here that looked like it was some smoke coming down and this was a sword in my hand and when we went back to the video pastor I have nothing in my hand I don't have a handkerchief in my hand I don't have a towel in my hand I don't have a napkin in my hand there was nothing in my hand my fist was balled up like this and I was telling the people to shout because the battle has been fought and the victory has been won and I said on the video and God just broke and destroyed every yoke and I what I did not know that what we don't know is that when you sit your arrogant self up in here and somebody tell you to praise God because God is breaking a yoke you act like they trying to make you praise God ain't nobody trying to make you praise God and we're not gonna make you no more I'm not getting nobody to talk back to me because what I'm telling you is that angels are among us what I'm trying to tell you is that the Lord is among us what I'm trying to tell you is that there is a power that is breaking and destroying every yoke no you don't have to praise him you don't have to praise him. You don't have to praise him. You don't have to head on those shanda. I'm going to tell you that God told me there is no time that I tell my people to praise me. That I'm not breaking something. There is no time that I tell my people to praise me. That I don't have angels on assignment. I'm not through. I'm not through. I'm not through dim some more light because what I got to show you next I'm not through stay right there Emory. what I got to show you next pastor I was looking at this right here and I said to them I said there was something else in this picture do you see this face do you see it go that go down do you see the arm we don't even know what that was 
but 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 damn it now go when we did the forensics what forensics says is that when you take the picture all the way down and you peel off every layer the forensics said out of all, over four billion searches there was no matches which means there is nothing in this picture that they can find in the world to match anything that's in this picture zero results searched over four billion five hundred and sixty billion images which means nothing has been added to this picture which means what you see in here is what God was doing while I was ministering in that service now go to the forensic picture and this is where we all went down on the floor in my office because I got this night before last go to the forensic picture now look at that there's another angel right here standing up what I thought was smoke over my hand was another angel right here that's the sleeve right there and here is that angel coming down and breaking every yoke but the mystery is that watch this move over this way son this wing right here was white and my robe was white so everything in the picture that's white should have went white but my robe went to a sapphire blue and God said sapphire blue is because angels recognize colors and colors come up off of the spirits of people when they are in the spirit of truth they spirit will read sapphire which means at that moment the angels are required to come and defend the truth I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me you better say something in this building you better open up your mouth you better open up your mouth that's why you cannot possess a lying spirit in this hour you cannot be deceitful you cannot be arrogant you cannot be cocky you cannot think you more than what you are this enlarge the picture and bring it down bring it down here's another angel right here here's another angel right here kneeling down praying on the side right here right here right here what I thought was some go, go, go up again go up to the color picture go up to the color picture go up to the color picture scroll it back up to the color picture oh my god thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Come down to the color picture. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come down to the color picture. Thank you, Jesus. What I thought right here, what I thought right here was smoke that was coming down. Go to the forensic picture. Go to the forensic picture. Go to the forensic picture. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go up. Go up was the hair of the angel going down his back. This is him right here. And God said to me, what you, go down, go down, go down, go down, down, no, down the opposite way when I say go down. What you can't see, which I'm going to make sure that everybody get a picture of this. What you can't see, but if you, if you look carefully at my wand, pastor, God told me to lay my palette against the wall and I laid my palette against the wall and every time I set up I would pray and I would tell the Lord blood block every demon and if you watch my wand this is a demonic spirit that is looking at me as if he hates my guts and could kill me but God blood blocked him against that wall go over to this side I I'm gonna make sure everybody this look follow my wand this is an eye this is an ancient demon right here this is his nose his mouth his chin and it goes down and right in here when I give you a copy you would see a major demon and God said to me that these two demons they were the ones that, 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 that were cast out with the third of heaven they are ancient demons and he said you need not worry about them coming against me because because he said they are world demons and their job is to cease the people of God from coming after God he said but that one that's in the corner right there go back he said this one right here he said that's the one that hates you because you carry the of sapphire which is under God's feet which is a part of the throne of God which is the truth of God and because you worship God in spirit and in truth and that was his job I don't think you understand what God is saying I'm going to let you have a picture of this I'm going to give everybody a picture of this so you can look at it and the more you look at that wall you're going to actually see real demons that are sitting on that wall that you can't see right now and what am I saying to you what I'm telling you is every time we come into this place God blood blocks demons against the wall I'm not giving you every time we come in this church every time we lift up God in a praise God binds the hand of the enemy and he sends down divine angels to fight on our behalf somebody give God a 
to you I have assigned an angel to you and he said wherever you go and you lay in the churches go up I'm going to send and release down so I can point to this I'm going to send the yoke breaker that is actually in the picture pastor that is literally in the picture nobody put that in that picture nobody put that in that picture Go to the color picture of it. My God from Zion, Jesus. He's doing it. He's breaking the yoke. That was another angel right there. Because that night I said I see angels all over this place. And so many times in those services I kept saying, I see angels. And the people would look at me like I'm crazy. I said, I see angels. The second, the first morning, I saw an angel on the left side of the church. And when I went to take a picture of it, I saw in that picture frame a big demon that was so big. And when I began to speak in tongues and plead the blood, it ran through the wall. And God said that was a strong man. And then the Lord said to me, you got to take the people up in high worship. But then I began to study and I began to read. And Pastor, this is the part that got me. This is the part that got me. The Lord said to me, the Lord said to me, he said, Juanita, he said, I want you to understand something. The angels did not come ground level. He said, angels are in a state. Like, 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 like over this building. Angels are in a state. They are in a state, Pastor. State not meaning uh, California or Florida. Which means the angels, certain angels cannot come to a certain level. You understand? There are angels that walk among us. But then there are angels that have been designed to watch this, Pastor. To do battle for God, for the truth of God. And he said, whenever the praise gets high enough and the people go high enough in the spirit they enter into that realm and when they get into that realm every lying spirit that's over their life it will cause those angels to begin to fight on behalf of the truth and he said that's why we cannot let the spirit of God drop in this church he said that's the reason why we got to keep pressing the people to go higher in the anointing that's why the anointing has got to take over this building that's why nobody in this building anymore can afford to sit and cross your legs when it's time to praise God everybody gotta praise God because when you do it would lift the sanctuary up into a presence where the enemy will begin to do battle for what is the truth over your life because the devil is trying to steal from you he's trying to kill from you he's trying to destroy you but God said that's why he said we gotta walk in the spirit we gotta pray in the spirit we gotta live in the spirit are you hearing me can show. Go up. Nobody. That's why in this season you can roll your eyes at me all you want. 
because nobody in this building will shake me. And hold on, let me just say this, and I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the fact that the Lord has arisen to defend his honor in this ministry. He has risen. And I give this testimony. I preached. You better look. I preached in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And I ran a revival. And while I was running the revival, the revival went over some. But when the revival started, a couple of pastors was telling their people, don't come to the revival. And they had big churches and they said, we dare you to come to the revival. Don't y'all go over there to that mess and no, she carried no ark. And God had me to stand and say, not many days hence. Not many days hence. Because you don't block souls. And some of y'all spirits in here, you blocking souls. You sit in here like the spirit of God is not in here. And you pride yourself in not praising God when the praise go up. God is going to get you. I'm going to say it again. God is going to get you. I said not many days hence. And pastor, the revival ended three months. And after three months, the first pastor got through teaching his Bible study and walked in the back and sat down in his chair and died. And when the ambulance got there, he was dead. Not even three months later, the main one that got up and came against me in public and said all men are evil against me. Somebody walked in his church because he was having an affair with somebody. And the man walked up in the middle of his revival while he had a guest evangelist and shot him dead in the pulpit in front of all of his people. And God said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. But he's not just talking about me. He's talking about this temple. He's talking about this temple. He's talking about this temple. There's a prophetic anointing in this temple. I'm not giving y'all. And God has said, touch not my anointed and do the thing that prophesies to all y'all and saying that you better stop doing it hard you better stop because as a prophet I am obligated to pray the things of God. And I have asked the Lord. I've asked the Lord. I said, God, raise us up. Dr. Morgan, I prayed for you. I saw you preaching like you have never preached before. My Lord told me to tell you, just be yourself because we need what you got. Because we need the word that you got. We need the foundation that you got. And I began to pray for you. And the Lord, I saw an anointing come down on you. I saw it in the Holy Ghost. What am I saying to y'all? I'm saying to you that I'm laying in this place and I'm praying. But God is also showing me other things. And what I'm saying to the Lord is send your hand against them. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Because I can't lay in here and prepare and listen and pretend to be a prophet I just can't pray good stuff I pray God if they don't move move them I said God if they refuse to leave I said God if you got to bring the death angel you bring it but whatever you got to do don't let us mix this next move of God in this church I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me I said God whatever you got to do I don't care if we got to have a funeral then God so be it but whatever it takes we can't miss the move of God we can't miss the mantle of God you didn't tell me to shut the church down and come back here to die God move every hindering block move everything that's stale head of the bush 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 head of the oh do it God do it God do it God have your way have your way have your way send your minister angels send your minister angels send your minister angels I blood block every demon I blood block every demon I blood black every foul spirit. I blood black you. He 
said when I showed my face people said somebody said I don't know in the world somebody said maybe that ain't God and he said I let that little boy take that picture and he said the power of God took me out for two hours I called his pastor she said he's had a prophetic anointing on his life since he was a little boy and he ain't wanting to play with God we matched the time the times of, of him putting it up and the times that the picture went up there is no way that all of that that's in that picture that somebody in a matter of two minutes two minutes can make all of that go in that picture there's no way and I said to God I said God why did you do this he said I made myself manifest because people don't believe I'm God he said and they don't believe that angels are among us and they don't believe they don't believe that that angel right there that's the yoke breaker pastor God said he's a killer that angel right there will kill for the truth and I want people to understand that in this building that God is saying tonight that angel right there will kill for the truth I don't think you hear what I'm saying you better pray and ask God to birth truth in you you better pray and ask God to break you and cause you to walk in humility you better pray and ask God if it ain't me you want to use this Sunday then God I'll step aside I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me somebody better say something up in here somebody better say something up in here I'm not hearing nobody talk to me in here somebody better say something because this ain't no game this ain't no game this ain't no game this ain't no game because I hear the Lord say the Obama generation is coming I hear the Lord say that the young generation is coming I hear the Lord say I'm giving to flood this church with the Obama generation and they are thinking people and God gonna have to make a believer out of them and I'm gonna need the righteous I'm gonna need the intercessors I'm going to need the prayer warriors. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Somebody better say something. If you're not going to sing for Jesus, if you're not going to give him your all, then get out of this praise team. Because you stand in a dangerous place of worship. If you're not going to serve with a spirit that I serve everybody, I don't just give Dr. Johnson a tissue. I give Sister Melissa a tissue if her nose is wrong. I give Sister Erica a tissue. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Somebody better say something here. Somebody better say something here. I'm not hearing y'all. Lord Jesus, I can't hear nobody. If somebody start coughing in the church and it look like they choking three rows back. Come on, somebody. I'm going to run back there and say, sis, is you all right? Is you all right? Let me get you some water. I'm not hearing about who shall sustain me. Somebody better come on here and give God a praise up in this house. Who shall sustain me? You watching my internet. Who shall sustain me? You watching my internet and you playing with God. You better stop playing with God. Who shall sustain me? You watching my internet and my hand of the Lord. Oh, it's telling me to tell you to stop it. You better stop it before God stop you. Somebody give God a praise up in this house. Somebody give God a praise up in this house. Somebody give God a praise up in this house. Somebody give God a praise up in this house. When I say open up your mouth, give him a praise. Because that's what he's doing for you. I said give him a praise. Because that's what he's doing for you.
I was paralyzed, Pastor. When I saw this, I ran and I threw myself against the wall. I went through all kind of changes. And the first words out of my mouth was, God, I don't want this. This is too much of a responsibility. Why would you let something like this be revealed? Why would you, why would you do this? Because I don't want to be famous no more. I just want to come to my church and I just want to do 5 a.m. prayer. And I just want I want to be here in you. I don't want to go like that. Why would you do this? in my office I was laying the day before yesterday and I was praying I lift up my arms and I was praying for my sister and when I got through I said before I finish I said and I release you the yoke breaker to go and I said in Jesus name and when I said amen my sleeve on my sweatshirt went like that. No hard, like, and I said, go. And since that meeting, God has given me a divine revelation and a relationship with the heavenlies. I do see angels. And I do see demons. I do. And when I say they are in the building, when I say that God has got them, He's blood blocked them because what happens is it's free roaming. It's free roaming because the building is not holy. The people sanctifies the building. So when the people get in here, and they refuse to praise God then there's spiritual warfare because there's all kinds of diversities that are going on in the spirit but when the people come together as a us our and we and we begin to give God a praise it's like the blood of Jesus go and push them demons up again no you don't hear what I'm saying not just push him up against the wall but out of the wall i'm not hearing y'all talk back to me and what you don't know is that in one unified praise i'm talking about a good praise out of your spirit do you not know that your listen do you not know that whatever you praise in god with if you got a burden the angels are already with and they own a sign and they already going to get your relatives they're going to get your brothers and your sisters they're going to get your mothers and your fathers are you hearing me the your breaker is in activity when you give god praise somebody Yes, 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 yes. 
yes, 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 In spirit and in truth. Oh, I say in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Oh Jesus, make us right. Make us whole. Deliver us from all evil. Our Father, who art in heaven, how are the end? The kingdom come! The kingdom come! The kingdom come! The will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Oh God. Oh God. Now forgive us, Lord. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not. And lead us not. And lead us not into the temptation of perception. Lead us not into the temptation of bad perception. Lead us not. Don't let us be perceived wrong. Pray that prayer. God, don't let my actions, don't let my person be perceived wrong. Don't let me have the wrong perception. Don't let it be me, God. Don't let it be me. Don't let it be me. Don't look at no, Jesus. Don't let people look at me and see the wrong perception. God said, pray that now. 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 Don't let people look at me and get the wrong perception. God, deliver. Deliver my outer man. Deliver my outer man. Whatever the residue is, that's still on my life. Whatever the residue is, that's still on my life. God, purify. God, peel me like an orange. God, peel me. God, peel it off of me. God, peel it off of me. God, peel it off of me. It's the wrong perception. It ain't my heart, God. It ain't my heart, God. Hey! 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 Peel it off of me, God. Peel it off of me, God. I don't want, I don't want the wrong perception for the kingdom. I don't want the wrong perception for the kingdom. I don't want the wrong perception for the kingdom. Deliver me, God. 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 Somebody has perceived me wrong. Somebody saw the wrong thing. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Somebody so arrogant. Somebody so entitlement. Somebody, God. Somebody, God, perceived me wrong. And Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me for the wrong aroma. Oh God, forgive me for the wrong aroma. God, forgive me. Forgive me for nothing. For not wearing the colors of your throne. Forgive me, God. Forgive us, God. For not wearing the colors of your throne. Of your throne, God. Of your throne. Of your throne, God. Forgive us, Lord. For not wearing blue. Forgive us, Lord. For not having a sapphire spirit. Forgive us, God. Because the spirit of divine truth wasn't able to flow through us. And somebody ran us the wrong way. And somebody perceived us the wrong way. Forgive us, God. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, God. I want to be made whole. 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 Don't play with God. 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 
Don't play with God. Don't play with God. Don't play with God. Don't play with God. This is the last hour. This is the last hour. This is the last hour. We in the last hour. Don't play with God. This is the last hour. Get your heart right. Ask God to keep it right. Ask the Lord to put the seal on you. Ask God to seal it. Ask God to seal me. Seal me, Jesus. I'm tired of flowing in and out. I'm tired of being in and out. God, seal me. I don't want to be lost. This is the last hour. This is the last hour. We're in the last hour. We're in the last hour. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Ask the Lord to break you. Ask the Lord to break you. Ask the Lord to break you. Stop it. Ask the Lord to break you. 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 Stop it. Stop it. Ask the Lord to break you. Stop it. Ask the Lord to break you. Pull out of the bashanda. He said that the boat shending. Suck it in the bashanda. Who the other bakasia. Shoot at the bakos and the mahaya. Pull out of the bakasika in the haya. He said that the ashanda. You in the temple of the Lord. You in the temple of the Lord. Pull out of the bakasia. He said that the bakasaya. This is the temple. The temple where truth abides. It's 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 the temple where truth abides. Let truth prevail. We in the temple of the Lord. This is 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 the temple of the Lord. Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. 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 I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. 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 Where the spirit of truth lives. Where the spirit of truth abides. Where the spirit of truth has. Where the spirit of truth has. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Religion will choke it up. Religion will choke it up. Religion will choke the spirit of the temple. Religion will choke the spirit of the temple. Denomination is choking the spirit of the temple. Your evil ways are choking the spirit of the temple. Your arrogance is choking the spirit of the temple. Your pride. It's choking the spirit of the temple. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you want. Come all the way! Come all the way! Come all the way! Come all the way! I want to use you! Come on in! All the way! All the way! Oh, 
There's a greater anointing. There's a greater anointing. There's a greater anointing. There's a greater calling. There's a greater calling. Greater than you see. Greater than you know. Hey! Somebody in this building. He said, da 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 Sukashunde Messiah, Holy Messiah, Holy Messiah, Holy Messiah, Holy Messiah, Holy Messiah. We bow down in your presence, Holy Messiah. We now worthy God, Holy Messiah. We thank you, Jesus. Oh God, don't take it away from us. Don't take your Holy Spirit 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 away from us. God, if you take it, we ain't got nothing to help us to travel into the realm of our defense. God, don't take your Holy Spirit away from us. Because God, if you take it, we can't go to the heights where we can be fought for. God, don't take your Holy Spirit away from us. God, if you take it, we can't travel in the realm of the Spirit. God, if you take it, we can't go to higher heights. God, if you take it, hey, we'll just be here, God, with ground angels. We'll just be here, God, with just angels of protection. But God, we want to go, Jesus. We want to go, Jesus. We want to go to the realm of the Spirit. God, we want you to use us for your glory, Jesus. Hold that head of us,
Spirit of the Lord is here right now. Spirit of the Lord, 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 Spirit of the Lord is here right now. 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 Spirit of the Lord is here right now. Spirit of the Lord is here right now. Spirit of the Lord is here right now. Here right now. Here right now. Spirit of the Lord is here right now. 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 
Sing. I want y'all to sing an acapella. My God, 
from the top, all over the building, get your hands up, come on, my God, he's here, my God, he's here, my God. Everybody, come on. My God is here. My God is here. My God is here. Right now. 
My God is here right now. You get that wrong. My God is here right now. We have to get that. We have to get that. My God is here right now. Yes, yes, yes. It's two endings, two endings. My God, He is here right now. Everybody say, My God is here. Come on, everybody, we got it now. My God is here. My God. Sing it like you mean it. My God is here. My God is here. Come on, get your hands up. My God is here. Right now. One more time. Come on, from the top. My God is here, my God is here, my God is here right now. Oh, come on, everybody, sing it. My God. song. My God is here. Y'all are awesome. My God is here. My God is here right now. Oh, come on, everybody, sing it tonight. My God.
It's a plan and not a problem, Jesus. It's a plan and not a problem, Jesus. The enemy won't be to keep looking at it like it's a problem. But it's a plan and not a problem. When God gave me that song, I saw angels along the wall at Pastor Medina's church and their mouths were round like this. And their mouths was like a complete circle. And I heard them go, oh, 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 oh. Trust me, said the Lord. 21 people in this building that will give the Lord $114. Come now, quick. The Lord said, trust me. He said, trust me. Come now, quick. The Lord said, trust me. I'm getting ready to do something supernatural. I'm getting ready to do something supernatural all over the building. He said, there's 21 people in here. I said, trust me. God said, trust me. Trust me when you can't trace me. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. There's 20 more people that need to come right now. The Lord said, trust me. The Lord said, trust me. It's not your last. He said, trust me. You don't know what I'm getting ready to do for you. You have no idea what I'm getting ready to do for you. You have no idea. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come now. He said, come now. He said, come now because you're in here. He said, come now. 
Nine more people, come now. You're in this place. You can get $114 back, but you can't get a moment back when he called you to tell you to do something. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to look up on that screen. I wouldn't lie to you about no offering. I'm too scared. I knew he was real, but now I know he's real. I knew he was real, but now I know he's real. Because mm -mm. I'm not a visiting evangelist. I'm not somebody that's raising an offering because they're going to give me 50% of it. I told pastor, I don't want nothing. I don't want an offering. I don't want you to give me one dime. This is my church. I'm doing it because God said do it. I'm preaching no different in here than I would if I was on a major platform out there. I'll be preaching on the Word Network next week and you'll see me preaching just as hard for millions of people as I do right in here. I don't want a dime. What I want is for us to become the temple. Thank you, Jesus. For us to become the temple. Somebody else need to move. Hurry up. If you come and come now. My God, I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In other words, I don't have no motive in it. I don't have to get on the plane and go back to my church. You ain't got to give me an honorarium. Because I'm going to be right here to see what God going to do. I ain't going to tell you he going to do something. And then I'm, you, you don't see me till next year. You going to see me Sunday. I'm going to be right here. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. The Sunday after that, you're going to see me. I'm going to be right here. Tuesday morning prayer, you're going to see me. I'm going to be right here. And I will stand my watch. And I will see what the hand of the Lord shall do. Because I know my Jesus. And he's my God. And he can't lie. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Every person in here that's got a $50 seed, come now. And get this envelope out of my hand. Come quick. All over this building. Every person in here that's got a $50 seed anywhere on you, come now. He talking to you. How do I know he talking to me? Because I got it. Prophetess, I got it. I'm called to help sustain the kingdom. Oh, somebody worship God. Somebody worship God. Come on quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody in here that will give God a $20 seed, come now and come quick. Come now and come quick. Thank you, Jesus. My God is here. For the SCS. Come quick, saints. Thank you, Jesus. Come quick, saints. Thank you, Jesus. My God is here right now. Right now. My God is here. He's here. Right now. Right now. Right now. My God is here. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Take an envelope from me. Five hundred dollars. My God is here. My God is here. He's here. Oh, Oh, All over the building. Come and lay your offering. 